you say is the trait that you and Bob had that enabled you to build this business? Were you smarter than other people, harder working? Um, what was it that you said, I really have this skill that enables me to do this and other people can't quite do it quite as well? God, I wish I knew the answer to that, David. Well, you must be uh, smart or you but, must be. You know, I mean, obviously I'm smart enough. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, I was very, very successful at listening to my own song. Uh, I was very capable of ignoring the noise. Uh, the number of times people have told me you don't understand uh, I, I, is legendary. And yet I was comfortable and had the, the level of self-confidence that allowed me to make the right decisions at the right time. So if um, somebody is watching and says, I want to be the next Sam Zell, I want to be a really smart, successful real estate investor and basically build the kind of business empire of the type you've done, what would you advise them to do? Go to get a good, or her, to get a good education, to work hard, be trained by somebody, have a good mentor. What would you say is the key to kind of building the kind of reputation and record that you have achieved? Isn't the answer all of the above? I advise people, for example, that I think being a lawyer uh, or going to law school is an extraordinarily valuable thing. Even though I can tell you I hated every minute of it, uh, the fact that I'm trained in, in the legal system um, and the fact that I live in a world where the legal system uh, is prevalent in everything I do. Uh, I've been, you know, I, I very successfully encourage people to go to law school, even though they have no interest in practicing law. Uh, in the same manner, whatever your specialty, whether it's real estate or something else, um, you, you got to really be, you, you got to really be committed. You got to really understand what's going on. If you were to uh, say well, the best investment advice you've ever been given, what would you say is the best investment advice somebody ever gave you? I think I once, you know, very early in my career, had a had a conversation with somebody about barriers to entry, and I had never really thought of it. But you know, I understood the fact that gee, a monopoly is better than an oligopoly, and certainly better than competition. But I never really understood and put it into fashion. But this conversation I had where he explained to me, you know, when it's all said and done, your success or your failure is how well you've assessed the barriers to entry. Because if there are no barriers to entry, then you're vulnerable from day one. If there are barriers to entry, uh, depending on what they are and how they play out, uh, you can do a much better job of assess assessing the opportunity. In your observation, what is the most common mistake that the average investor makes, selling at the wrong time or buying at the wrong time? I almost can't answer that question without using the word optimism. You know, one of Sam's favorite Samisms is we suffer from knowing the numbers. Um, I think we've managed to uh, tip through, to, through the tulips for the last 50 years by never allowing ourselves to get swept up in the enthusiasm of whatever the current event might be. And I think by maintaining that level of discipline, uh, yeah, we've made mistakes, and that's to be expected, but we've, they've all been, quote, controllable. Uh, no one mistake uh, was ever, you know, catastrophic. So when I make a mistake in the investment world, I think about it for the next 10 or 15 or 20 years. I never forget it. Are you able to walk away from those things and just go on to the next thing? Um, historically, that's been the case. I mean, I can't help but think about uh, the baseball player that gets paid $30 million a year for getting a hit one out of three times. My job as an, as an investor is to be right a lot more than that. Uh, but more important, not to be wrong.